والسلام الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب صح صدري ويسر لي أمري وقت الأطفاء من لساني يفقه القول الآمين Um, JazakAllah khair for coming. It's a Friday of the evening. Probably everybody is tired, coming from work. Not tired, alhamdulillah, that's good. And may Allah increase you. If you have energy, may Allah give you more. If you don't have energy, may Allah give you energy. Ya Rabbi, I mean. JazakAllah khair for coming. Uh, apology for the delay we are starting. It's because of the Salah time. And it's a blessing to me to start a program with the Salah and with the Salah. And in between, it will be full of work, inshallah. So I was asked, to we'll talk about this um, topic, which is the adab of the aim, the etiquette of seeking knowledge. And this actually applies to everyone, meaning you are somebody who comes once a month to a halaqa, to a class. You are somebody who was enrolled in a university, and you took the path of the deen, the path of knowledge as your career. Or you are someone who stays home. You love to learn. Or you basically do it online, live stream, you read books. It doesn't matter. Because the only result is the same. Which is, you want to learn about this deen. And this is especially, when we talk about the etiquette of aim, we're talking about the etiquette of aim, sharai, the etiquette of the sacred knowledge. The knowledge that will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as most of you know, we have to spend beautiful time on the weekend. So what is number one weekend? I'm not going to give lecture. We're going to talk. So what is number one? The meaning, as we learn. The first question you're going to ask yourself, each one, and that actually, if I may add, is not only when you are learning the Deen of Allah. And I always, when people ask me, because some of you may be, I'm an optician gynecologist by a profession. So people know the medical students come to me and I want to be an OB. And I said, why do you want to be an OB? And this is my usual answer. If you're doing it for money, believe me, go and do it for something else. Go and do something else will give you much better income and less work. So you always have to look at your intention. Okay, number two, I'll give it all to you, but let's talk first. Number two, intention, your after Two, gentlemen. That's it. Intention, we're done. Alhamdulillah, we're good. It's about 10 points at least. Hmm? Okay, that's number three. You practice what you learn for two. Okay. Three. It's okay, don't write, because I'm going to give it to you in detail. But I just want you to wake up. But, okay. Hmm? This will be the last thing. The last point. You never, and I say this, Never learn to teach. Absolutely. Yes. Because then you will take the right, the wrong intention. Never learn to teach unless you want to teach your children. And you say, I'm not going to be able to raise a good children unless I know. But you're not going to say, I want to help my family. No. No, 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 no. This actually will come when Allah wants you. So what else? I'm sorry? Exactly. Absolutely. You need to be humble. And we're going to talk about this in detail. I'll give you examples of the humbleness of the real scholars, not me and you and us, the real ones. Okay. It's 10, ladies and gentlemen. This is only three. Okay. Mm. Yes. We said this was the intention. This all comes with the intention. Then the other etiquette is me, is related to the student himself. So we said intention, you said you're going to practice what you learn. We, didn't, we said we have to be humble. Hmm? I can't hear you. Being kind, being gentle, it's part when you learn, you're going to change. Okay, I'll take this one. It's, it's good. It's, the sign you're learning is when you're changing and changing to the better, not becoming arrogant, 
You see, you know how we are. We learn two hadith or one hadith, two ayat, and then everybody else don't know nothing. No. Okay. It's part of the it's it's still in my life is gonna change. Because I took this back path to learn about Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Things in my life will change. Like what? How I'm gonna look at my time. Who are my friends? How do I look to my teacher? And to the people who taught me. And this is extremely important. How do I look at the people who wrote the books that I am studying? I'm talking about people way before, right? And Actually, number two or three, you need to be patient. You really have to be patient, otherwise you're not going to learn. Because you're going to give up very quickly. Okay? So let's start first, before we get into this item, get to this, I'll give it to you one by one. You need to learn one thing before you even start this path. Something which is unfortunately, especially living in this day and age and living in the Western world even more, it's something called you need to learn the adab, meaning you need to know to be polite. You know what I'm talking about? Because this day and age, what is the character of the human being in general? What does the kids learn in school these days? Hmm? Absolutely. Right? Look in, into my eyes, no respect. Uh, I don't like it, it's not fair, I answer, right? All this, and that's becoming the norm. That doesn't mean when you are a student, and this, we're going to come to this, that you're not going to ask, and you're not going to be the positive aggressor. But the other with the teachers, you need to train yourself to be uh, a, a bugger, a person who knows nothing in learning, before you even take this path. For example, I'm going to give you some of the examples of the old uh, Imam Malik. Right? You all know Imam Malik. He said, كانت أمي تعمني وتقول لي اذهب إلى ربيعة فتعلم من أذبك قبل إلمي. He was a young man or a young boy. So she used to get somebody to go to the class. Look at yourself or your child. And تعمني meaning she used to make him mature, be dressed properly. You know, wear the turban. And she said, go to Rabia, one of the teachers. But to learn politeness and manners before you learn anything else, go and learn manners from him. Manners, meaning how do I sit? Remember for those of you who were with us in the retreat in the weekend, and you looked at me when I first started talking about this. I was like, the way you sit, the way you handle your book, the way, especially for the Quran, all these are signs of the manners. The more respect we give to this knowledge, Allah will give you more. For example, Abdullah bin Mubarak, a very famous, almost saint, and he's a knowledgeable and a faqih. And the Adab manners is two thirds of knowledge. I learn to be polite with the knowledge of Allah. It's two thirds of the knowledge itself. And the more polite you are, the more humble you are. Allah will teach you more. He teach you more, gives you more knowledge, or make you understand way easier than you thought. For example, Sufyan Thawri, which is a faqih and a very famous one, he said, لَيْسَ عَمَلٌ بَعْدَ الْفَرَاءِ أَفْضَلُ مِنْ طَلَبِ الْعِلْمِ There is no good deed to do after the obligation, that Allah made the obligation, but to seek knowledge. And he said in his time, the man, meaning man or a woman, will never start learning before they start to be polite. Give me an example about us these days. Are we polite with the... And I'm not talking about myself. I will give you that. I'm talking about when you go... No, I really mean it. When you go to the real, the real youth, the real scholars who spend their life learning, and we sit in a lecture. And how do we behave? How do we sit? How do we ask? How do we behave when we disagree with the, with the chef or with the teacher about something? How do we normally? And I'm sure Sheikh Mustafa has much more to comment later on. But in general, in general, we think that we are equal, equal, right? And as all the teachers teaches you, especially when you start taking this side, they tell you 
If you're going to come to learn this gym with a full cup, you will learn nothing. You know what it means. Because if the cup is full and you're going to put in it, what's going to happen? It's going to overflow. So whatever you're learning is going to come out. You need to come to this gym, to this knowledge, especially the sacred knowledge we're talking about, with an empty cup. I know nothing. You come to a lecture and you say, I know nothing. Once you come with this attitude, Allah will make you see things you've never seen it before. I'll give you an example. How many times, and all of you, when you read the Quran, for example, Jizu Amr. We all, how many times we've read Jizu Amr. But when you read it with an open heart, and Allah has opened your eyes, how many times you look at one ayah and say, did I read this before? Is this really the one? How come I didn't see this? What happened? It's the same ayah. The Quran didn't say it. It's you. It's your attitude toward the things. So the other reason that you come, the way you learn, the way you speak, the way you look at this, this knowledge, you need to look at it as a ni'mah, as a blessing, that Allah will not give it to anyone. And if He gives it, gives it to you once and you didn't know the value and you're not grateful to it, Allah will not give it to you. So for example, also Abdullah ibn Mubarak, who said the following, من تهاون بالعدب whomsoever took the manners of learning not seriously. Allah will punish him by taking away from him the love of doing the extras of him. Pay attention to this. These are small things. But it's extremely important. So if you don't think being polite with your teacher, following what he or she says, when I'm reading the book, the way I sit and I read the book, Allah will not this is what it does. You're going to look at the sunnah as just sunnah. What's the big deal? Then you do the same class after Maghrib, it's just sunnah. So Allah first will take the sunnah. And He said, مَنْ تَحَوَنَا بِالْسُنَّةِ عُوْقِبَ بِالْتَرْمَانِ الْفَرَائِمِ And whosoever will take the extras lightly, you're going to lose the obligation. Ask anyone who stopped praying, how did, they, how did this happen? The first thing they will tell you is what? We stop doing the thing. And then gradually they delay the salah. And then salah is done. And that's why don't look at any of the sunnah. Enough of our Quran salam did it. Don't look at it as very lightly. It's the sunnah. And they who was speaking took the obligations very lightly, Allah will be driving from knowledge. So you cannot be a student of knowledge and you do not pray. Let alone regular, let alone on time, let alone the extras. And I'm, I'm, I brought the salah as an example, but I'm talking about every obligation. I cannot be, uh, and I said this many times in the street, I can't be a student of knowledge and I start watching TV all the time. You're not going to get it. Allah will take it away from you. Or you will, you will have it. You will understand that. So you really have to learn the other with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first thing you start when you start learning is what we learn in Tashkir. You empty your heart from all the diseases. You cannot look down at people and you're arrogant and think you will learn. You cannot be jealous from people except not the jealousy or the, the positive jealousy. If someone is a half of the Quran, I want to be one. If somebody has memorized all the books of Hadith, I want to be like that. If somebody wakes up at 4 o'clock every day for Qiyamuli, I want to be like that. That's okay. But not, who is she? She's with me in the class, who is she? No. You need to empty all this, all the bad characters in you. You look at this. You memorize this. You practice this. You ask Allah to give you this. Then you come to the following points of the aim. Did you get my point? So the first thing is work on your manners. Work in your manners. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a shape for a teacher who stress on these points, you are lucky. Because these things you don't see, Allah these days. Unfortunately. If Allah gives you one who really pay attention to the adab of the room, then you are absolutely lucky. Now come to the point. Number one is the last. Intention. Intention means what? What's intention? Simple question. What is the intention? What's the intention? There's one answer to this question. Is why? 
why I'm doing this, why you're here, right? Why do you want to watch TV? Why do you want to go to college? This, is, this question, the answer is the Nia. So I want to learn because I want to be rich. Your Nia is to be rich. So the first thing is why you want to learn this? Why? The answer has to be only one answer. And that is to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is a class, sincerity, is an obligation or is an obligation? Hmm. It's an obligation. Who says so? Remember what he said. If you're going to give me a hook, you need to give me the belly. If you're going to give me a ruling, give me your your proof. I can easily come and tell you, no, it is not. You're right, by the way. Absolutely, it's an obligation. But who says so? Allah can't tell it. And where is that? It's a total thing. It's a total thing. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ they were not ordered but to worship Allah alone with sincerity. So this, especially this knowledge, this kind of knowledge, no reason, no reason you are seeking it but to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How about there is no other place I can study and Allah just put me in that time? Not, nothing else. I couldn't get to any college and then, I, you know what? Okay, let me get a year to study with you. What do I do? Where is my knee here? Is that possible? Yeah. Or you're gonna accept, you got accepted but not this year, 2018. And he said, you know what? I have one year. Why do I want to stay home? Let me go in California Institute University and then I'll, I'll study. What do you do with that? Hmm? Say that again. Exactly. Remember what we learned? You always examine your need because the need is going to change. You apply to Islamic studies because you really loved it. And then after a month, you find out this is too difficult. This is not what I want. Right? You need to re, re look at your knee and say, you know, if you don't like it, but it's going to be for a month. So you come in here and you, and you said, you know what? The only reason I'm here is because there's nothing else I can do. Fine. You look at yourself and you know what? Allah is so generous. He brought me here. I wasn't thinking, why don't I take that he would, and I'm going to do it for Allah. So you revisit your meaning. And the Rasul Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in this beautiful hadith, Whosoever, man ta'allama ilm, mimma yubtaga bihi wajillahi, la yata'allamu, illa li yusibu bihi aradam min ad-dunya, lam yajidu arafa al-jannah, yawm al-qiyam. Whosoever, and this is hadith Ahmed and Abu Dawood, Whosoever, learns his deed, any kind of deen, any kind of knowledge that will supposedly, in dunya math, in dunya meaning, it will get you close to Allah. I want to memorize the Quran. I want to get to Islamic studies. I want to be a PhD student in Islamic studies. This is obviously knowledge of dunya. Whomsoever did this, but for no reason but to get a reward in this dunya. For example, I learned there is an opening in, for example, Southern California University for a chaplain. And the only way I can get this chaplain, and I really want to be part of the faculty in University of California, is to study Islamic studies. So I'm going to go and do this, because I want to be a chaplain, because I want to be on the faculty. Whosoever does this, to get something of the dunya, if he, he or she will not smell the smell of dunya. Will not smell the smell of dunya. And there's nothing sacred than learning Qala Allah, Qala Rasul But you really have to look at your meaning. For example, why you are here today? Why you are here? Don't tell me. Inshallah, for Allah, for sure. But that's my point. You really have to keep asking yourself, why I'm doing this? Why I'm learning? And that goes to your children. Why do you want your child to be a part of the school? Why? Because it's the book everybody else is. It's becoming, alhamdulillah, it's a beautiful, it's like a, it's a, a spreading, I wouldn't say disease, it's a, a spreading character, which is beautiful. But why? Why do you want to do You have also to look at this, because so people in front, in the, when you go out, people say, oh, mashallah, our children are fat. And that's not for Allah. 
right? Or for yourself. So, so definitely look at your niya. What is the famous hadith about niya? Hmm? The famous hadith. Any book you open, the Afliq of Hadith, the, the first hadith in Bukhari, the, what is that? Inna al a'malu bin niya. Right? Verily, these are measured according to the intention. Right? And you know the famous hadith, why uh, the man who wanted to go to Medina to get married to a woman. And when they came to Rasulullah he said, Ya Rasulullah, how we can let him come with us? He only coming with us because he wants to marry a woman. And what was the answer? If he is coming to marry the woman, then he will get the reward of it on marrying the woman. And if he is coming with us for Allah and his Rasul, he will get the reward for Allah of migrating for Allah and his messenger. So the niya is the most important thing in everything we do, let alone when we study for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Yusuf, how many of you are Hanafi here? Right? So who is Abu Yusuf? Abu Yusuf is Sahib, an Imam. I said, Goose Hanafi. Right? Okay, so Abu Yusuf, he said, Uridu, or oh, oh, uh, 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 learn this thing for Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala. I have never looked at this one. This is Abu Yusuf. I have never looked at this one. I have لم أقم إلا والله قد رفعني. Okay, I'm gonna translate. He said, learn this only for Allah. Meaning, don't look for any greater reward. And he said, whenever I sit in a gathering, in my near is only to be humbled to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have never left, but Allah had elevated me. And whenever I sat in a gathering, to so that I know, I did not get up, but Allah has put me down. And who is this? That's Abu Yusuf. So always, never, never do, especially this dream, this promise, don't do this for any reason but to please Allah. And that's the continuous question you are going to talk to Allah. Are you happy with me? Is this is how you want me to do this? Is this is the pleasing you? Ya Allah, if this is not, then change me. Show me. And don't worry what people talk about. People can praise and people cannot praise. It doesn't matter. Remember, what's the sign of that you are sincere to Allah? In general, in anything you do. What is the sign? And the teacher that scholars always teach you this. They say, Alamat al the sign that you are sincere to Allah. Praise and no praise is the same. So if people look at you and say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, you're the best person ever. And people look at you and say, you are the worst ever. No praise inside you. Then you are sincere to Allah. We get to train. And this is in everything. You know, I just praise the way I cook. The kids, the kids did not praise the way I took. I took it for you, Ya Rabbi. The kids say, Jazakallah khair, Daddy, you gave me this. Daddy, you didn't do anything for me all your life. It doesn't matter. Because I'm doing it for Allah. So, equal praise. That's why don't praise people too much. Because then we get used to it. And our ears will get used to it. And we'll miss it. Because it's, the next loves it. Us loves to be praised. So, once you have them the same, then you are in a good place. So the first thing is an ikhlas. Number two, which we, we didn't mention it, we're going to say number two is taqwa Allah. Taqwa Allah, you have to be Allah conscious. You have to be Allah mindful. You have to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every step you do. Right? And one of the nicest, the most beautiful definitions of taqwa is actually two, two of the scholars. One of them I don't remember who's doing. Who said, in your video, kafaytu, kafaytu, أن يجدك أن يراك حيث يريدك أن يجدك حيث يريدك وأن لا يقتصدك حيث يريدك الله will find you where he wants you to be and he will not miss you where he wants you to be or the other way you say it, he will find you where he wants you to be and he will not find you where he doesn't want you to be for example 
Time has passed. Where should I be? Time has passed. Where should I be? On my bed. On my musalla. In the masjid. I should not be watching TV or talking on the phone. I'm not talking about emergencies. There's no emergency in TV, by the way. But in, on the phone. I'm, I'm talking about regular lights. So, taqwa an yajiduk aat. Alhamdulillah. An yajiduk haitu amarat. He finds you where he ordered you. He wants you to be. Talq ibn Habib, another scholar, he defined taqwa beautifully. Am ta'man bita'atillah. Ala nurillah tarju thawab Allah. You work, do, say anything in your life. What pleases Allah? It's an obedience to Allah. And how do you know this? Based on what Allah taught us. And for only one reason, you want this pleasure. You work, do, say in your life everything what pleases Allah. Ala nurin min Allah, what He showed me and taught me, not the way I like it. And you only, only, you want His pleasure. So this is the taqwa. Taqwa Allah, there is no student of knowledge. And he or she is in the path of obedience to Allah. And I'm talking about everything, and we said this many times. Obedience of Allah is not only do. The obedience of Allah is, don't do. But he tells me, don't do something. My obedience to Allah is to follow this. When he tells me, lower your gaze, and this is to men and women, what does that mean? You know, I need to, to lower your gaze. My gaze is not even but. And we live in America, we live in this day and age. He said, lower your gaze, and this is the real qatai. This is clear proof from the Quran. Allah says, don't back by meaning. Don't back back. There's not a and button. I didn't mean it, and it says slip of the tongue. So, taqwa Allah, and Allah said it clearly in Surah Al-Baqarah. You want to learn? What do you do? Have taqwa. What taqwa Allah? What you are limited to Allah. You practice taqwa, Allah will teach you. And you're going to say, how Allah is going to teach you? He's going to teach you by sending you teachers. He's going to teach you by making you love what you are learning. He's going to teach you by making you practice. He's going to teach you by sending you people who does things in front of you with things that please Allah. And you see, this is very easy and nice. By you having the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I keep using the word taqwa because our ears need to get used to this word. Ittaqillah. meaning what in general? It's put a shield between you and the wrath, the anger of Allah and His punishment. And how do I do this? By obeying Allah. So I can't be a student of knowledge, or I'm memorizing the Quran, or I'm learning hadith, or whatever that's close, bringing close to Allah, and I am have a morning life, and then I come home, and I am done, I'm like anybody else. You talk as people talk, and you do what other people do. You can do this. And you all know the famous ayah, Whomsoever, practice the taqwa of Allah, Allah will give him ways. Open ways to, to him. And the best risk, the best sustenance Allah will give you is a good one. Knowledge that changes you. So, so far, two. Any questions so far? Clear? Not too hard? May Allah teach us, Ya Rabbi Ami. But number two, number three. Three, you practice what you learned immediately. In Amalu, Bil'in. The famous ayah, of course, is the most. الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ فَيَسْتَبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ أُولَٰئِكُ الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهُ وَأُولَٰئِكُ الْمُؤْلِ الْعِبَادِ Those who listen. So the first line, the first step to learn, you need to listen. And don't rush and come to conclusion. I know this. This is not good. I'm not interested. This is not going to get me anywhere. Don't do this. يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلِ And Allah didn't say, يَسْتَمِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَوْلِ they listen to the best. No, they listen to everything. So yes, they follow the best of it. So you've learned five lectures about, for example, salah. You're going to listen to these five. And then you're going to follow the best one. Meaning, the closest to Sunnah, closest to the Quran, the easiest one I can do according to these things. You need to practice. Sayyidina Ali, radiallahu anhu, said, Al-Ilmu. 
Green knowledge calls for action. وإلا تركه فاشتقه. If you're not going to practice, knowledge will go away. How many times we started? How many of you? If you can show me hands, that's good. If not, it's okay. Started the course. What's the drop rate of course, Islamic courses? Sheikh Mustafa. What is it? 50%? Okay. Ya Allah. In the Quran tools, it's 50%. In the Quran, well known statistics. So the, the class starts at 10, and then, then they get 5 to right And now 75 is even, even more. Why do you think it's Number one, because we don't practice. Number one, I think it's our niya. We have really to look at the niya. And number two, because we don't practice. Yeah, and we learned, for example, Arcanus Prada. What's Arcanus Prada? Can I ask? Is it okay if I ask? What's the pillars of Prada? Just give me a number, how many there are, regardless of the Majahid. Other than Muna and Yafa. And of course, what we say. Hmm. Just give me a number, throw a number. The pillars of salah, meaning if you didn't do it, if you missed it, that salah is invalid. You did not do salah. You just moved. Hmm. Give me one time. Forget the numbers. Give me one. Takbiratul ikram. Alhamdulillah. Hmm? Al-Fatiha. Okay. Before, before. Take it, take it one by one, so you never forget it. There's a difference between outside or inside salah. That's fine. We will say that. Okay. But there's one before I go for the food. That's all before. I'm talking about inside. You said Allah. There's one before you go for the food. Can I pray sit And I have no excuse? Al Qiyam. You have to do standing. Al Qiyam is al Qudra. Right? You want to go more? Three in Rukhwa, three in Sujood, and then the, the, the last, uh, the Jansa al Akira, and then you have the last Tushakhud, and then you have the Tushmeen, and then you have the sequences, it has to be in that sequence, and you have the Ultimate Yan. You have to take your time with them. But these are ABCs. I don't want to give too much because then you're going to probably have a new lead. But the point I'm trying to make is I pray daily, and I don't know the Arkan, or if I memorize the Arkan, and I'm not practicing them, I'm not going to learn them. You need to practice what you learn. Whatever you learn. The last time you attended a lecture, or listened to a YouTube, or read a book, this is all parts of it. Or you listen to an e-book, or read an e-book, or listen to an audio book. You need to start practicing. It's difficult to to Allah says, Allah makes it easy. But don't move. And you know all this, the Sahaba, when they memorize the Quran, how did they memorize the Quran? Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas has the famous one. He said, we did not move 10 ayahs. We did not move to the next 10 ayahs before we memorized, understood, and practiced. So, al-ilm wal amal And he also also said, so he said, inna yurad al-ilm wal amal The reason you learn is to practice. Do not leave. Look at this one. Don't leave knowledge to practice. Meaning, I don't have time to study. I'm going to do Qiyam al and I'm going to read Quran, and I'm going to memorize Quran, I'm not going to learn anything. Don't do that. And don't leave the amal for aim. And don't not practice because you're studying. You know what? I'm studying, I don't have time for Qiyam. For, for, you know. I don't have time to read my Quran. I'm studying. You need to get to the balance. You need to get to the balance. You have to practice what you learn. Whatever you learn, practice it before you go to the next one. So, so far we learned in Niyya, the two have to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three is practice. Number four, be patient. Be patient. We have too many forces, words against us when we are learning the sacred knowledge. What's the first force against us? Before Shaitan, you always throw it on Shaitan. Before Shaitan. It's us, yes. Us, not see, me, inside me. Right? It's boring, it's too hard. What I'm going to get out of it? I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to sleep. So, number one, I have to watch against my nuts. 
who is absolutely shaitan and how shaitan will operate. He has so many ways to operate. One way he will operate is through people. How many of you people will look at them and say, what are you studying? So how much they will pay you? What job you will get? Right? Can I be a little bit tougher? So when your son or daughter wants to study Islamic studies, right? What do you normally tell them? Go to medical school, finish medical school, and then study Islamic studies. Two or four. Why? Why it's so important to be a physician? I'm one. I'm not making fun of them. I'm one of them. But why it is so important? Because we, they make, we make more money than Islamic studies. So Satan will come to your friends, your parents, your colleagues. Like, what are you doing, especially if you already established? Why are you doing this, you know? What else Satan is going to come to you, to you, or to me, or to us? Can I tell you? It's too difficult. This is way too hard. You cannot do this. Especially if you're not 18 or 19, you know, you finish college and you're working. It's going to come and tell you, this is, uh, this is way, too, well, you, you're, you're too old for this. There's no age for this. There's no age limit. Allah did not put age limit to memorize the Quran or to learn about the Rasulullah Islam or to learn how to get close to Allah. Never. At all. What other way should Islam come from? Ask yourself why you're not doing this. Then you will know the answers. Why you're not doing it? Tell me I don't have time. Right? I'm too busy. You don't have time to watch TV? You don't have time to cook? You don't have to entertain time to entertain people every weekend? Either invited or you have guests? You have time for them. But why don't I have time for the study? Because that's how Shaitan comes to me. Shaitan doesn't come to me you don't have time for the, to go out. No, no, you need to feel good about yourself. You need some time out. All for us. So you need to be patient against yourself, against the shaitan. Absolutely. One of the things, one of the ayahs that you basically practice with you as you are studying, memorizing Quran, is the ayah of Surah Al-Jumar. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Burn those patient people, people who are patient, people who practice patience, they will be rewarded, unaccounted for. The scholar teaches you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, two things he said there is no accountability, a fixed amount of reward. Everything he says, one times ten, except two things one in the Quran, one in the Hadith. One is sabr. Burly, those who practice patience, who their character is patient, Allah will reward you. And the second one is fasting, which is part of Sabr. Our Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Hadith put, and he said, "Asawmu." Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said, "Asawmu li wa na adzidu." Fasting is for me, and I will reward you. How much? So you really have to practice patience with this, and you need to teach yourself to be patient. Why do I need patience? I need patience. Number one, to find the right place I want to study. The right school, the right program. These days you have to pay for it. These days you have to take time off. You have to go to the teachers. You have to be patient with the teachers. You're going to come to this. Some teachers may be not your style. Some teachers may be tough. Some teachers may be not the way you are used to. You need to be patient with this. And you're going to beg and ask a lot to give you patient. Because that's the main reason why people drop out. Because they are not patient. They're going to say, I'm not going to be able to do this. This is too much for me. Don't do this at all. The more la ilaha illallah, there's a hadith question which you probably most of you, if not all of you, know the meaning. And Allah said the meaning of it. When you try to get close to Allah and you come in an arm length, how Allah will come to you? In a leg wide length. So I take one step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will take two steps towards you. I take two, Allah will take ten. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he's not moving, he's not coming. But this is how it is. You are so finding it difficult to study, finding it difficult to stay in that program. Just to stay. Turn to Allah and say, Ya Rabbi, Wallahi, I want to come close to you. What's going to happen? You're going to feel different. Allah will send you a teacher who you love. 
or a friend who's going to really make you feel happy. Or suddenly you're going to start enjoying it. Or you're going to find it is really easy. What happens? There's a same human being. What happens is, you're, you talk to Allah and you want to get close to Him and you practice patience. You have to be patient. as It doesn't come. Actually, and I say this all the time, again, in my profession, any knowledge you are learning, you need to be patient. In residency, I'm an OBGYN. In residency, you work 18 hours straight, sometimes 36 hours. You work 18, then you're on call, then you finish next day and you go. When I look back, I was like, how did I do that? Why? Because I loved it and I want to do it. And Allah gave me the patience. Same thing when you study the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just say Allah will make it easy. The people who learned is not better than you. And I always say this to myself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all two eyes, two ears, one tongue, and the same brain. Nobody was given four and I was given two. So I say I can. The difference is how much you have patience and endurance. How much you really want to do. And I always say this to the ladies. Cooking any kind of a food that has a lot of this, how much it takes you. Two or three hours to get things ready for guests. Some people look at you and say, I can never do this. You know, I'm just going to pick up the phone and order. Why do you do it? Because we love it. You want it. So anything you want, and you love it, Allah will make it. Keep going. Now just keep going. And the famous today is a Friday. What did Sayyidina Musa do? What's Friday? Why did I say Friday? Salt and Kahat. Okay. So there are two trials of Salt and Kahat. Salt and Kahat talks about trials. Things we will be tested in this video. We're going to be tested in our game. We're going to be tested in our money. We're going to be tested in our knowledge. And we're going to be tested in our, in the power. So the story of Sayyidina Musa is about what? About knowledge, right? Sayyidina Musa, which we're going to come to this, Sayyidina Musa thought that he knows everything, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him someone who, Sayyidina, who knows way more than him. First thing Sayyidina Musa said, told Sayyidina Musa, you're not going to be patient. Because this is hard. You will not be able. Right? And what did Sayyidina Musa first said? Satajiduni, insha'Allah, sabira. No, 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 no. He didn't give up right away. No, no, no. I will, by the grace of Allah, I'll be patient. This is what he told himself. I will be patient. And keep reminding yourself that people who learn are not better than you. They, are, they, they won't have anything more than I do, except more resolve. So, niya, taqwa, your pure intention, Allah's conscious, practice what you learn, and be patient. Five, don't be shy to ask. A student of knowledge wants to learn, and you do not understand everything. You do not know everything. Especially for those of you who don't know the Arabic language, because a lot of the books of Dean are in Arabic, let alone the Quran. Don't be shy. Having said that, the other way around is don't be too arrogant. And you learn how to ask the shayukh or your teachers because it's part of the other, right? And if you disagree, and it's, it's, it's going to come, of course you will disagree with people because there is a different opinion. How are you going to present this? It's never over. In this path, you say to your teacher, you're wrong. You're done. Allah will not teach you. Most of the shayukh, the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, they would not get offended by what you say. Because their knee is for Allah. But you will not be wrong. Don't say you're wrong. This is how I write. Right? You always, what do you say? You know what? I'm probably wrong, but that's what I read. Can you please explain it to me? And then probably your teacher is going to tell you, you know what, there's different opinions, and you're going to start learning about different opinions, especially in fiqh. So ask. And, and I always say this to the woman. They ask the Rasulullah questions. I am an OBGYN now, and I feel very uncomfortable talking about it. And they absolutely did not have, they were not hesitant to ask. Who asked the Rasulullah thought was not about menstruation? And it's in the Quran. They ask you about menstruation. Who asked it? The answer is in the next ayah. Who asked? 
فالصحابة يسألون عن المحيط قل هو أذن شرطا إس pain is hardship فاعتزلوا النساء في المحيط stay away from the woman in during menstruation right يسألون عن الخمر والميسر they ask you about gambling and about alcohol they ask and the woman asks the Rasul Allah then you ask because if you don't understand you need to understand but before you ask you need to learn the adab the etiquette of asking ask with an empty cup don't ask with and for example very common these days we hear people say I am read in the internet right I'm not saying the internet is wrong no there is a lot of beautiful information there on the net but there is also a lot of information you need to not to read and unless you have the knowledge you are not going to be able to, to differentiate so you cannot come and argue with a scholar saying I read on the internet let alone other things we hear so ask but learn the adab of the asking number six the brother said it be humble be humble. The more you're humble, the more Allah will teach you. Allah Nabi Allah have seen people. Yeah, and if I tell you they are walking Quran, I'm not exaggerating. And I'm talking about him, some of my teachers. Walking Quran. They talk one line and they quote the ayah with nothing in front of them. I've seen women they quote the hadith by the Senate by everything. Right? And you see them. If you start even to say Jazakallah, then your face become red and they tell you what do I know. And here we are, we learn this and that, we memorize this or this and we start becoming, and if they don't call us this name or that name, we get better. Be humble. Be humble. Very humble. Right? And even the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave him the knowledge what was the only du'a that Allah asked him in the Qur'an to ask for more? In Taha, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِبْنِي عِلْمَ And look at the way of the du'a. وَقُلْ Say, رَبِّ مَاي Lord, زِبْنِي Increase me in knowledge. Meaning, I'm not going to do it. It's not me. It's not my, because I'm very smart, because I'm very hardworking, I and I. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِبْنِي You go and increase me in knowledge. That's humbleness. Very humble. And Sayyidina Umar said a beautiful line. Ta'allamu al-ilm. Learn the knowledge. Wa ta'allamu lahu s-sakina wal-waqar. And learn for it. To be humble. Sakina. To be serene. To be calm. And to have dignity. Wa ta'wadahu liman ta'allamu. Wa liman ta'allamu. And lower yourself. To those who you are teaching and to those who you are learning from, lower yourself. Sometimes you get your teacher 20, 25 years younger than you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the age. It's not about age. It's about who knows more. Right? The teacher can be older, the teacher can be younger. I had patients, my patients who are my teachers. When I and they, in the office, they call me the Torah. But when I am their student, they call me by my name. And I'm very happy with this. And the same thing. I don't call them by their first name because they are my teacher. No, I'm in the class. I'm their student. And the same thing here. You don't look and say, well, what does he know? He just came. He just graduated. Doesn't matter. He learns. He knows more. May Allah reward him or her for giving you their time. And you learn from them. Each one you can learn from them something. So ta'allamu al-ilm, learn the knowledge, be humble to those who teach you and those who you are learning. وَلَا تَكُونُوا جَبَابِرَةَ الْعُلَمَةَ And don't be so arrogant and mighty. In no way your knowledge is going to combine with your ignorance. If you are ignorant, then you are arrogant. This doesn't come together. It does not come together. And Imam Malik, Called Harun al-Rasul. إذا علمت علما فليرى عليك أثره. When you are taught something, people should see the result on you. When you are taught something, people should see the result on you. It's not I know and I just say. People have to see. You learned, for example, um, 
uh, you, you learned not to look down at people. You learned arrogance is a major thing. And people should see that in your behavior. So when you enter, and you entered, and you are the last one to enter, and everybody took a good place, and you are the oldest person, but that's the only place available. You learn not to be arrogant. You learn to be humble. Then you're going to go and say, that's Allah gave me that place, I'm just going to have a brand. You practice here, and this is see what Allah will give you. Five people will get up and give you, give you their rest. Because you're not looking. So definitely be uh, humble. And Imam Shafi'i, he said, no one seek this knowledge with arrogance, and he will be successful. But those who seek this knowledge by being very humble and living the minimum and serve the knowledgeable, he will be successful. Serve the people who teach you. And I'm not saying this because I'm saying I'm teaching you all the way. I'm saying this in general because we're seeing this, we're losing this. The people who teach us, you should never, it's like your parents, you never forget to their favor upon you. They have to be part of your job. It has to be part of whatever they taught you. They taught you how to read the Fatiha, and you say it's only a Fatiha, it's a Fatiha. Anything they teach you, young or old, make a dua for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make you the Ibn Teach someone, including your children, and they will make a dua for you. So always be humble. Number seven, Shaykh Mustafa, tell me, when do we have to pray? Six minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the rest. Maybe I'm not going to get into detail because we need to. Pray. Number seven, you need to have high bar. Raise the bar when you are learning this dream. Raise the bar. Don't say, I'm going to, for example, memorize the Quran. It's okay if I memorize the Don't say this. Say, I'm going to memorize the whole thing. Raise the bar. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have guests coming to your home, do you, do you give them one dish? Of course not. At least five, six, or ten, right? They are my guests. Why? Because they are my guests. So why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open one dish? Raise the bar. And, and I say this always, this is beautiful hadith, and they always remind you of this hadith when you are learning this deep. Hadith in a sermon. Or Sali Prophet Islam says, You have to be in Take the advantage of five before five. Some of you may know this hadith. And if you all know it, alhamdulillah, that's the fitna of the Quran. Remember, remind, the reminder benefits those who are the believers. Take advantage of five before five. Shababuka, Allah Being young, youth, you have energy, you have the resolve. You don't mind, you don't need much sleep, you have the energy, you don't need to, you don't need to eat that much, you don't need to sleep as before you get old. Sababuka, qabla haram. Sathatuka, qabla saqam. Your health, before you get sick. You have headache, you cannot fast. You start having high blood pressure, the conditioner will tell you maybe it's not a good idea. You have diabetes, forget it. So, sathatuka, qabla saqam. Faraguka, you have free time before you get busy. You're single before you get married. You only manage with no children before you have children. Summer before school starts. This is all for our time, free time. That's why I always say this to myself and to everybody. Muslims should never say you are bored. What is bored mean? You have so many things to do on this life and you tell me I'm bored? Or I get depressed because I have nothing else to do? Faragukha, qabla shuhuhu. You have words, use it for Allah, for your benefit before you get poor. What's the mean get poor? Things change or you will have too much responsibility. And the last but not the least. Like today, the, the, uh, it's amazing and it's going to be not a Muslim. The garden I opened when we were entering, it's amazing. And you know, I used to say, hi, how are you? I said, how are you? He said, I'm, I'm perfect. And I looked at him. It's I'm alive. I remember this hadith. I asked you, you are alive before you die. So, Alhimma, take the demon. Be, have high resolve. 
And I'm just going to give you the rest of these one by one, and then you can always look it up later on. The extremely important knowledge, who's your friend? A prophet, the Quran of prophet. Make sure those friends who, if they are not better than you, they are with you. Never, ever take a friend who's going to put you down. Because then you will not continue. Don't, don't have a friend tell, what are you doing? Oh, I tried, it didn't work. Don't waste your time. Don't do that. Take a friend who finished, and they are above you, and you say, oh, come on in, it's not a big deal. You see, in the beginning, it's hard. Allah will make it easy. That's what you want. Number nine, time. You need to be time efficient, as they say in these days and age. Very efficient. You don't waste your time. You don't do something that takes five minutes, you do it for 30 minutes. You're wasting your time. You have to be extremely efficient. The list to do, and, and everyone, how much it takes, you will give it that much time. Be open to different opinions. And this by itself means a whole lecture. Be open to different opinions, especially when we come to Salah. These are all scholars who differ. Who are we to say who is right or wrong? Be open, especially when you are learning different madhab or different opinions. Or it, it, be open. Be open. And number 12, which we talked about in the beginning, politeness with your teaching. Politeness with you. I cannot stress on this. I can't stress on this. Extreme politeness. Extreme politeness. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abdullah. He is like the ink of this Ummah, meaning he's the one who knows everything. He used to Anas, which is the, 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 the help of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Anas is, Sayyidina Allah ibn Abbas pulled the donkey of Sayyidina Anas because Sayyidina Anas taught him. He's younger. And he said, this is what we learned from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Abu Abna Abbas, the cousin of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sayyidina Anas is the servant of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But because he learned from him, he used to pull his. And Sayyidina Anas is on the donkey or on the, uh, on the horse, and he pulls the horse. In Adab Ma'ashim, Ma'ashim. Now, writing the knowledge, reviewing the knowledge, memorizing the knowledge. What you are writing, it's not going to look at you again, and nothing is going to stay you. So you write, you review, you memorize. Write, review, memorize. The last thing is you call people for Allah. When Allah takes you for them. You never do it because you want to do da'wah. Remember, in the, in the retreat we said this, what is da'wah, invitation? You don't invite people to something you don't have. You invite people to your home when you have a house. You invite people to regime when you are practicing regime. So, last thing is you use your knowledge to teach, and I will say the first good people you teach is your household. If you teach your children, Alhamdulillah, you will have a ummah of ulama. Just focus on your house of your. جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه السلام